There he is. I think that is. There we go. Sometimes you luck into some decent fish. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another crappie fishing video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I use side imaging to locate brush, rocks, and trees in order to find schools of light buttons. I mean, crappie, crappie. We're finding schools of crappie on the river today. I also wanna to talk to you about the importance of jig size and fall rates. This little tip in the video is gonna hopefully put more crappie in the boat. This video is sponsored by Crappie Monster. Be sure to go to crappiemonster.com, use promo code DAVIS, that is D-A-V-I-S, all capital letters, get 20% off your entire order. Today's video, we're gonna be using the small fry pattern in a few different color patterns. This is that bait fish pattern that crappie love this time of year. We're gonna be talking about how to use side imaging to find these pieces of brush right on the breaks of these channels. Uh, well, it's a main river channel. There isn't any creeks or anything like that. It's just one big river. And I'm using side imaging to find any type of brush or rock pile that's kind of set up right along the break. That's where I'm finding all these crappie. We're in late July. And these crappie are gonna stay here probably until the mid to late September uh, before they push out a little bit deeper or they try to find some deeper docks to uh, suspend under. So we're gonna be doing that. And then also I wanna talk about jig sizes because fall rate is super important this time of year to trigger a bite. Um, I went out last weekend and I had to really mix it up between three 16 ounce jigs to all the way down to one 16th to try and trigger bite. So today we're gonna to be talking about jig size as well and why that's important. After making a few casts with an eighth ounce jig, I realized quickly the jig was falling too fast in order to trigger a bite from these crappie that were suspended over this rock pile. The reason I can tell the fall rate's too fast even without live scope is typically when you know you're casting into a school like that on brush piles or in this case a rock pile, you'd be getting thumps, like they would be tapping it and they're not even tapping it. So that, that usually means the fall rate's too fast. If you can slow down the fall rate, give them a chance to get a really good look at your plastic or whatever you got tied on, that's gonna help out a lot. Cause then you can determine, okay, is my profile incorrect on the plastic? Is the color pattern the thing that's throwing them off? Right now I'm just using that Ozark smoke, which looks pretty much like a minnow. And there's a ton of bait fish that look exactly like it in this river system right now. So we're gonna drop down to this 1 16th and then always close your jig box because that's gonna be a mess when you hook a fish and stumble over that. There's a fish. Oh, they're walleye. Well, heck with it. We're gonna go for walleye right now. I get asked quite often if walleye tastes better than crappie. And let me tell you, you get a bigger filet on most walleye than you do on crappie. So you can't blame me for trying to chase a couple of these fish and put them in the live well. There he is. That might be a keeper walleye. Got the net ready. Yep, I think that is. There we go. I think it's, it's he's gonna be close. Might be a little tiny. Well, crappie weren't cooperating, so we're gonna go after these walleye. Oh, he's just short. They gotta be 15. He's 14 and a quarter. Nice little walleye though. All right, see ya, buddy. There he is, got him. Oh, it's a crappie. <laughs> we got a mixed bag of crappie and walleye down there. That's a good crappie too. Well, sometimes you luck into some decent fish. Let's see what this guy is real quick. Put him on the bump stick. He's a 10. Coming home with me, bud. So after that crappie, I was not able to catch any more crappie on that rock pile. So I decided to go try to find some fish that were willing to bite. Oh, there he is. Be a bigger fish. Nope. These are all dinks. They're all like seven inch dink crappie. There's some big ones down there though. I can see them. 
You're just not reacting too well. So in order to find these new schools of crappie, I use my side imaging and I'm covering the breaks of the channel. So if you see on the mapping here, you can see the topographic lines go from really tight to kind of spread out. The tight lines means the channel break is very, very steep. Typically, you're not gonna find too many pieces of cover holding to this very sharp break. Um, what you do want to look for is a little bit more of a wider or a, a gap between the topographic lines because that's going to be more of a gradual slope and typically that's where you're going to find more of your rock piles, your trees, any type of brush or lay down. Um, more specifically, if you can find a, a little point like a sandbar or something that sticks out into the main river channel, what happens during the springtime, during the spring floods, that big current push uh, moves dead logs, trees, and they get caught up in the backwater eddy behind these sandbars. So it's on the downstream side of these sandbars or these points that stick out into the main channel. So you got the main current going on the outside of the sandbar and there's a backwater uh, eddy or the backwater current pushing back into the sandbar. This is typically where you're gonna find a lot of brush piles or rock piles where these crappie are gonna sit on these river systems. And that's kind of what I got set up here. That 1 16th has just got a slower fall rate and it seems that when the, the temperatures start rising, it's easier to get him to trigger a bite on a slower fall rate. There he is, he was running with it. And this might be a better one. No, they're all cookie cutter seven to eight inches. We're gonna see if we can pull a 11, 12, 13 inch out for the next five minutes here, and then we're probably gonna move. All right, well, now that we have found a piece of cover that we wanna fish on, unfortunately, this part of the river is a little narrower, and there's seems to be a little bit, a little bit more boat traffic, but there's the tree. It's a big old lay down right there. And we're gonna see if we can pull a crop or two off it. The biggest thing with this is if you're fishing a new body of water, or in this case, a new stretch of, of water, I actually never fished this side of the river this far south, you're gonna have to take some time with side imaging. And this is why I always recommend, even if you're buying, you know, if you're, even if you only have like 300, 350 bucks, buy something with side imaging. If that means you gotta buy a used unit, then do it. Don't spend your money on a brand new unit that does not have side imaging capabilities. Side imaging is so helpful when finding rock piles, brush piles, and especially if you're a crappie fisherman, this is the stuff you're going to focus on the most. Oh, there he is, yep. They're right to the back of it. They're tighter on the bottom though. Oh, because they're rock bass. <laughs> Wrong species. But typically that is where you find some crappie on the downstream side of any piece of cover like that. Most of those fish, I don't know if they're all gonna be rock bass, but most of them are on the back side of this lay down. Make a few more casts in here. If we don't pull the crop yet, we'll move. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Be sure to use some of these tactics when you're fishing a river system. Try to look on the downstream side of any points that stick out. Use side imaging to find rock piles, brush piles, lay downs. That's where you're going to find these crappie. Be sure to check out crappiemonster.com. Use promo code DAVIS, that's D-A-V-I-S, for 20% off. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water.